So, let's talk about Smart real quick. You have your PA, your system processing, and of course, you have your front of house desk. Now, obviously, as you toss more elements into the mix, things get more complex, but this is exactly why we do lots of pre-pro and create patch lists. You'll also need a tape measure and an SPL meter, which will help keep us accountable and consistent as we work. To get started with your laptop rig, you'll need a console, interface, as well as some sort of measurement software. I've got a TRS to XLR cable for two of my connections and a regular XLR for my measurement mic. You can see this reflected here in my patch list. Luckily for us, configuring Smart's I.O. isn't difficult, and you can assign inputs and outputs friendly names to keep track of them. The laptop rig name is a bit misleading as this is not a standalone rig and you'll need to tie it into your console. You can find more information about this in my patch list. If you really want to get in the weeds here, go read the manual, but essentially a transfer function is looking at each possible output for each of our inputs. In my case, I'm looking after system processing and after it hits the measurement mic capsule. Are we getting out exactly what we're putting in or not? Aww. Smart does offer a real-time analysis meter, which can be helpful when running front of house or picking out individual frequencies, like when you're ringing out your system, but we're more interested right now in the transfer function. From phase charts, magnitude responses, spectrographs, and so much more, this powerful software offers quite an insight into what is actually happening to our signal as it passes through our system. On our magnitude graph, we're looking at how the system is treating each individual frequency. The red line is showing our prefader aux, and the green line is showing our measurement mic. These lines should be pretty matched up, but I did not have the measurement mic in a great location during this capture. Phase offers useful analysis for both time and phase alignment, and though these lines will never be perfectly flat, you do want them to be matched up between comparison groups. In this image, I have two different traces open, and as you can see, they're not aligned very well. Finally, to wrap up this intro, when we think about transparency, we're considering a twofold concept. One, achieving transparency means getting out what is put into the system, but also that two, the listening experience of everybody in the space is as equalized as possible. Because of this, looking back, I think it may have been smarter to capture as many traces as possible and take note of any discrepancies, particularly between left and right. If you look at my Schneider data, right and left tuning results look very different, which means the system was probably not as transparent as it could be, and that highlights the problem with system tuning when you aren't sure of yourself you're actually likely making certain problems worse than fixing or tuning anything. That wraps up my smart intro, and if you're curious to find more information, you can find my blogs online at novacproaudio.com.